Hi folks, it's Evil here from Thundermus Lure Company and welcome to today's special edition of Thundermus Fishing Tips. Special because it's part two of our special three-part catfish spirit series. And who else better to have with us than the master himself, our boatless angler Antonio, and our special guest today is Lisa. And Lisa, you've been with us down at uh, Algonquin Park and you've been fishing for perch and now we're going to target some catfish. So session two, on this particular episode, folks, the, the theme we're going to focus on is rods, reels, and line. So stay tuned, folks. We're hoping to have a great day on the water, catching some nice catfish. You feel like a good one, Lisa? Feels pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Nice. I don't think it's super cute. No? Okay. You, you might be surprised, though. <laughs> now, Lisa's using your using a rather late rod, eh, Antonio? She's yeah, it's uh, five and a half foot. It's a medium action? Medium heavy, actually. Medium he Oh, that yeah. is medium heavy? Yeah. Okay. All right. Typically, when it comes to the catfish bite, a medium rod or a medium heavy rod are ideal. You want that medium, at least that medium, because you want to be able to get that hook set into the catfish. Typically, you're using bigger hooks, and you need a little bit of power to set the hook and get that hook set right into the catfish. So. A medium to medium heavy action rod is, is ideal. And now Lisa's got a six foot rod? I think it's five, five and a half. half. Five and a half, okay. Yeah. So five and a half six foot rod uh, for the boatless angler sometimes is nice because you don't have a lot of room where you're traveling and you're packing into a vehicle and sometimes you got to go with a two piece rod. But uh, ideally six, six and a half foot, even seven foot rod is, is more of an ideal rod for, for catfish. And uh, the longer the rod, the longer the cast. So in this case, a shorter rod, we don't have to cast out very far, it's okay. But if you're fishing an area where you want to get some distance, you're going to want a longer rod. Yeah. It's also hard because we've got sticks behind here, so we chose shorter rods today. That's for true. That reason. That's true. So depending on, yeah. <laughs> depending on the situation. <laughs> depending on the situation. But ideally, if you can get up to a seven foot rod, that's, that's pretty good. And, uh, and one piece, of course, is always better than two piece when it comes to fishing rods. Oh, that's a nice channel, Lisa. That is really nice. Two piece rods are convenient, but one piece rods give you a little more power. And they're much, much, uh, a much better rod to use. Oh yeah, that's a nice channel cat, Lisa. I'm gonna get on the other side of here, see if we can land this fish. Oh, that's a nice channel cat, <laughs> <Don't you? Yeah. laughs> Oh, Lisa, you got a good one. Oh, oh yeah. landing net. Yeah, landing net right here. <laughs> <laughs> Left hand and right hand. Okay. Oh, he's just caught on a whisker. And he just came off. Got on a whisker, Lisa. <laughs> Here's your fish. Look at that channel cat. Here, put a hand right underneath there and grab the tail. Like I've got it like that, just like that. That's a nice channel cat fish, eh? Hey? Nice color to him. Oh yeah, that's big. What do you think? How heavy? Maybe a good ten. He's a solid ten. Ten. Ten, twelve. Twelve, yeah. Solid. Look at the head on him, and look at the size of the whiskers, eh? Hey? They're on the feet. Look at the size of that whisker. It's it's huge. What a nice fish. Channel catfish, folks. You gotta love it. And she's gonna spawn, so we're gonna put that one right back in the water. Nice fish. Okay, and away we go. And graphite graphite rods are better than graphite or a graphite and fiberglass blend. Those those make a, a very good uh, a very good rod. And of course, you want a rod with some good eyes, like some Fuji eyes that are going to handle handle the line and uh, and work uh, work really well for you. But uh, and of course, the other thing is you've got a cork handle on yours. Cork handles are really nice on rods. Um, they're lighter, they're more comfortable, and they've got a good grip to them. And if for this kind of fishing, it's it's ideal. Oh, <laughs> Lisa, it's my turn now, folks. This one just picked up. Look at him go. Wow! It's unbelievable. <laughs> he just he just picked up my bait, folks. 
and before you could blink an eye, he was gone. I just grabbed my rod and set the hook. What an aggressive fish. <laughs> Good thing you got a nice drag system on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of drag systems, we talked about rods. Let's talk about reels. So you've got uh, a spinning reel. Yep. Instant anti-reverse. Total instant anti-reverse. Look at this. When I stop, that handle stops. And that's and good. That's okay. good. You don't want any play in that that handle. And the reason for that is when you set the hook, it's instant. There's no backlashing. And when that backlash comes, it jars, jars the gears on your on your reel. So instant anti reverse is very important. Important on the hook set too. I mean, sometimes if there's a lot of play, you lose tension on that on your hook set. So absolutely. And you mentioned front drag. Front drag systems, folks. They're the best out there. The rear drag systems are convenient because they're right back here, but they have to go right through your reel to your spool to control it. Whereas the front drag, it's one on one, and it's a much much better drag system. And when you're checking your uh, your reels, when you're looking at reels to buy a new reel, and you're checking out drag systems, wow. ooh, that's something big. It's a big boil. That's a big channel. <laughs> When you're checking out reels, you want the when you pull your line through or when you turn the, the the spool on the reel, you want it to be nice fine little increments. You don't want it to jump, jump, jump. Fine increments means you're going to have a nice smooth drag, which means less wear and tear on your line. It's the absolute best way to go. And the rear drags are more likely to get be jumpy. I They're, find. You know what? Yes, they are. You're absolutely right. Oh, that's a nice. This fish. is a good fish, folks. And the other thing is, I'm using a little reel here. You don't necessarily need a big reel, especially nowadays with the thin lines. With the thin lines, you don't necessarily need that real big, big, big reel. This guy is just motoring. He's like, he's fighting like a shark. Look at him go. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. Now, if you want to use... Oh, you got some sticks there. Yeah. Hope I don't break off. If you want to use a bait cast reel, bait cast reel allows you to use heavy, like if you want to use heavy, thick monofilament or heavy, th thicker um, fluorocarbon, then you could use a bait caster. But a spinning reel is great for those thinner, thinner lines. I'm land them for you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's a big fish. It's a nice channel. Oh, yes. Wow. Okay, Antonio. Get that landing net out. Don't disappoint me. Oh, look at this fish. Oh, that's huge. That's a huge fish. Holy mackerel. Oh my goodness. Let's see, Antonio. That might be your personal best. It, you know what? That's, I think it is. That's a big Holy fish. Holy mackerel. <laughs> that's, that's, folks, I'm telling you, he's close to 20. That's a. That's a Oh, solid. It's a heavy, heavy, heavy fish. Maybe, I'm, I'm going to say easy 20 pounds. Oh, Look at the size of the head on this fish. This is <laughs> just a huge fish. What do you think, Lisa? Huge. <laughs> <laughs> one of the biggest I've seen. That is one big channel catfish right there. Oh my goodness. And that is heavy. I, I don't know if you could tell, but look at my hand. It won't even go around this tail. It's a big, thick channel cat. Is it a female? Two little bumps in the back there, Lisa? Right here on the bottom fin. Uh, Can you see? I can't. Yeah, I think yeah. there's two bumps there. So this is this is a big female. I you think need a photo. I think. Yeah, I definitely gotta have a photo for my Instagram fans, and then we'll get this catfish right back in. Wow. It's too heavy. Both. You know what? This fish is easily, easily, easily 20 pounds. There's no two ways. <laughs> Hey, I tell you, that's really that's nice. a heavy fish. I'm gonna say he's over 20. I can't believe how heavy it is. Oh my goodness! Let's get his fish. Look how thick. Look how thick. Compare my hand to the head. Okay. Wow, what a beautiful release! You gotta love that. That was amazing. <laughs> So we want to talk just a little bit about line now. And uh, well, what's your favorite line, Antonio, when it comes to catfish? When it comes to catfish, I like to use fluorocarbon, straight fluorocarbon if I can. Fluoro? Yep, eight to 12 pound test. 
I don't like to overdo it. Just that's my personal thing. But, okay. Uh, you don't want to go too light. You know, it doesn't take much to get a nick or anything like that, and it can break. But fluoro is definitely strong, and so you can go. You get away with lighter pound tests. But if you had to choose between eight and twelve, you'd probably lean towards twelve. I usually go in the middle. Yeah. Then. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I'm running, I'm running a braided line. I've got the Thunder Braid on, um, and I also have the Thunder Carbon on. I've got a Thunder, um, a Floor Carbon Leader. And I really like the braided line when it comes to catfish because you've got a direct hook set and every single little bite, you can detect it right away. And uh, it, it's a direct hook set, there's no stretch in the line. But I still like to use a Floor Carbon Leader. Even though catfish are not as weary as other fish, and, and the line might not spook them, I still like to use that fluorocarbon because I just want to make sure that I have the edge just in case. And I'm, I'm running 20 pound Thunder Braid and I've got a 15 pound uh, Thunder Carbon Leader. And to me, you can get away with thinner lines, heavier lines, like a 20 pound braid. The, th the Thunder Braid is so thin, you can really pack on a lot of line onto a small reel and that's another reason why I really like to use braided line. You can get a lot of capacity on a small reel and if you've got long distance to cast it, it really works really well. It flies through the eyes really nicely because it's so thin. And uh, just the Thunder Carbon, I'm running straight Thunder Carbon. There's also not much stretch in, in a fluorocarbon line either, right? So that's very true. The direct hook set is still there. Uh, there's a little bit more give than braid but in comparison to mono, uh, Night and day. It's night and day. Yeah, yeah, if you had to go between mono and floral, definitely floral carbon. Yeah. <laughs> well, folks, I hope you've enjoyed part two of our special three-part series. We still have a lot more coming in part three. We still got to touch on rigs and hooks and most importantly, bait. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's episode of Thunderous Fishing Tips. I sure did with my personal best. Had a great day. Thanks so much for tuning in. And until next time, folks, as always, good luck. Good fishing. Part two of our special three part series. We still have a lot more coming in part three. We still got to touch on rigs and hooks and most importantly bait.